All right, guys, Rogue Nation here with you. I'm with James McLennis for Pinellas County Sheriff. We're going to do an interview here with him today. Uh, if you haven't been on his Facebook page, James McLennis for Pinellas County Sheriff, it's a, it's a great read. He's got some good ideals. Uh, he has my backing, which, uh, as a lot of you know, I'm very skeptical about uh, people in authority. And, uh, and uh, this gentleman has, has won me over. And uh, so let's get started right away, James. It's uh, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. And uh, do you want to give any backstory, or do you want to just go right into the campaign, or how would you like to? Oh, the, the backstory, I, I gave uh, him a little earlier the, uh, the long version, but for the Reader's Digest version, uh, basically I was a victim of some pretty intensive corruption of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department, and it was not just a few individual bad apples, as they say. It was a rotten barrel all the way up to the top across the entire agency, including the Child Protective Investigations, uh, the, the investigation units, the sheriff's offices, the patrol deputies, everywhere it was permeated with corruption, and they all worked together within this corruption. And when I realized that they have violated my rights in so many different ways and lied and cheated and filed false reports, everything you could think of, and when I reported it to Sheriff Galtier, he wouldn't do anything. There's no way to change that. Uh, if it's corrupt from the inside out, how do you change something like that? And I decided that I would run for sheriff uh, in 2016, so I informed Sheriff Galtier that I would run against him to expose his corruption. And his response was to illegally track me with a stingray, uh, falsely arrest me on four false felony charges. He arrested me the day before my custody case so that I would lose my daughter. And he tried to put me in jail to keep me from running in the race. Now, I don't know, I grew up in a different America. I grew up in an America where you don't falsely arrest your political opponents to win the election. Right, that sounds more <laughs> like a North Korea play or China. Exactly, and so I was able to, of course, prove all the charges were false, prove that the deputies lied. Uh, I was able to win 100% uh, of the custody of my daughter, uh, and so I, I was able to get through all that. Uh, I did run in 2016. I obtained over 100,000 votes here in Pinellas County, which set a non-party affiliate record. <clears throat> and I'm back in 2020, and I think that I've got a real good chance of winning as long as the people of Pinellas County understand the options that, that are being offered to them at this point. Okay, and some of the options that I'd like to talk about with you today is the, uh, the unenforceability or the unenforcement of the marijuana laws that is a big part of your campaign that you're running on. Um, I see this as a uh, as a great landmark uh, campaign uh, as far as that goes. I know for a long time a lot of people, um, not just in Florida, Pinellas County, but in the whole country, have been wanting something like this. But as you know, it's it's hard to get the government to listen unless you're a, a multi-billionaire to to what you want. So, um, do you want to go in a little bit on your marijuana? Uh, non-criminalization that you uh, plan to uh, enact once in office? Uh, yeah, actually, you say it's hard to get the government to listen. I think it's more insidious than that. Uh, the government knows what's right and refuses to do it because there is a benefit for them to refuse to do it. The for-profit prison, the for -profit prison, yep. uh, the mass incarceration of citizens, the control of the citizens, the expanding police state, all of that plays into why the government would not want to uh, decriminalize marijuana. And so when you go within the government system, like they did here in, in Florida, uh, where they had a big campaign and they went through the medical marijuana in 2016, uh, they, they passed it with an overwhelming majority of voters here in, in Florida, and we were, yay, we won the medical marijuana. Yay, what a big victory. But Tallahassee wasn't going to have any of that. What they did then is they started passing all these laws and regulations, and you can't smoke it, and you can't have this, and it's got to be so many feet from a school, and you have to get a license, and we're going to take this money from you and that money from you. And then local administrations started saying, well, we're going to prohibit it in our community. And so this big landmark victory was then Diminished. stolen and whittled away down to nothing, basically, by the same government that supposedly we petitioned to have this done because we wanted it done. And I, I found and I find that going to Tallahassee and begging them for rights that we should automatically have is not only a waste of time, it's a foolish endeavor. Because even if you do win, like they did with the medical marijuana, they're just going to restrict it and pass so many laws that it's not going to change anything. You know, you bring up an excellent point, and it's something that was illustrated a couple years ago when uh, I think it was President Bush was in office when he lowered the tax rate. 
uh, for the Americans and everybody was like, hey, you know, we got lower taxes. Well, research showed across the board that wherever federal taxes lacked, the state income tax or the state taxes went up. So there really was no net benefit from that. And you're saying pretty much the same thing with the legalization of the uh, medical marijuana here in Florida went on. Yes, I think that that I think it's a it's a carrot that the government is never going to let us achieve. Uh, that there's always going to be a government interference, a government intervention, and the, the highest thing that they can hope for, the, the cannabis community or the free freedom community, is that uh, they will have a decriminalization but, or legalization of, of recreational, but even that is going to be fraught with uh, overtaxing, over expenses, over regulation. The government is going to become the drug dealer, and what they're going to do is they're going to provide you with a much poorer quality product at a much greater price, and there's still going to be a lot of loopholes to jump through. Right. So what I propose is something a little different. Um, in, in each individual county, we have a sheriff, and that sheriff is elected to represent the people of that county, and they have the right, the people have the right to elect a sheriff that offers them the policing that they want and the law enforcement that they want. It's a very unique opportunity, and it's a very powerful vote for the people in every county. But here in, in Pinellas County and in other counties, the public is being fooled to think that we only have the option of picking from the few candidates that the police industry itself chooses for us. You have to pick from the police industry. You have to pick someone who's been in there for 20 or 30 years and already well indoctrinated into the police mindset of corruption and uh, it's us against them. Well, in reality, you don't. Uh, the Pinellas County Sheriff is just like any other elected official. It's nothing more than an administrative position. You don't have to wear a badge to administer the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. Absolutely. And if you are already indoctrinated, you're not going to allow any police reforms. You're not going to do anything that goes against the government. One of the things I've, I was shocked to find out is that if you are a police officer or a sheriff here in Florida, you swear an oath. And that oath says basically that I swear and affirm uh, that I will protect and defend the Constitution and the government of the United States and the state of Florida. So they're swearing to the Constitution, which we know they violate. Right. Then they're swearing to protect the government of the United States and then the governments of the state of Florida. Which we know they do because if you've seen any First Amendment auditing videos, exactly. you know that the government, uh, when a government employee calls, even for something as a sus suspicious person, uh, you've got four units there within five minutes, but as you, a private citizen, would call uh, for a burglary, you might wait three or four hours and maybe a cop will stroll by and take a report and throw it in the trash on the way out. So, Or search you and arrest you for having uh, if a they, If they don't shoot you, if yeah. they don't, <laughs> for, being, <laughs> for being suspicious. <laughs> So, so the point is, is that um, we have the right to the law enforcement we deserve, and we have the right to the law enforcement that we want. And as sheriff, I have the power, I have the right to not decriminalize, to not change the law, to not legalize, but I absolutely have the power to deprioritize the enforcement of that particular law. Just like you see up in Virginia where the sheriffs are getting together and they're saying we're not going to enforce a uh, gun ban. The red flag laws. Yeah, we're not going to enforce. Uh, we're not going to go out. And we're not going to seize weapons under any kind of legislation that they pass. That's a good example of a sheriff standing up for the people of Pinellas County. And when I swear an oath to, after I'm elected, I want to have it actually put in my oath that I'm there to protect and serve the people, which is absent from the oath that every sheriff has taken in the state of Florida. I want to be here for the people of Florida. And one of the things I want to give the people of Florida is the policing that they want in the area of marijuana. 67% of the people here in Pinellas County in the state of Florida want legalized recreational marijuana, not because 67% of the people in Florida smoke pot, but they want the ability to not have people put in jail, right. not have people arrested. And, and as taxpayers, we should have the right to not pay $3,800 a month to have you sitting in jail. Right. Okay. Here in Pinellas County, we spend $500 million a year on what I call the Pinellas punishment machine. Right. And every single man, woman, and child that lives in Pinellas County pays about $500 each out of their pocket to make sure people that smoke pot are in jail or other crimes. And I think that we can whittle that down. I think we can take that money that's being wasted on marijuana enforcement and have it go towards some of the 80% of the crimes that the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department doesn't enforce, doesn't solve, and doesn't help the people with. Right. On your webpage, it, I had just come across that it was a term that I didn't know. Uh, was the exceptionally cleared as far as the rape cases go and you know I, again I was shocked to find out what a low percentage of cases are actually solved and uh, you know it just it boggles my mind that we're paying more and more money 
and like you said, the percentage of cases over the years that have been actually solved uh, remain pretty much the same. Yes. Um, you know, and I've always heard that you know, you know, seventy percent of uh, of burglaries go unsolved, and the people don't get their their property back, and and such as that. And and I didn't know the mechanism uh, per se that they were using to to say they had won those cases when they actually hadn't even really done any work on those cases. Like you said, some cases hadn't been assigned a detective, or excuse me, the Tampa Bay Times, the story on them said some cases hadn't even been assigned a detective, and they'd been uh, exceptionally cleared, you know, yeah, I mean, to, I, to boost the numbers up. Exactly. I don't know if how you would feel, but if that was my sister or my mother or my daughter, uh, you know, my aunt, my uncle, some relative of mine that had been viciously raped, and I find out that the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department didn't even assign a detective to it because it didn't matter to them, and they just swept it off to the side. Uh, they didn't process the DNA kits, which a lot of sheriff's departments don't do because they say it's a cost factor, <clears throat> but yet they have uh, $80,000 luxury SUVs. Uh, there will be three and four Pinellas County Sheriff's deputies that pull over uh, the variant speeder on Gulf Boulevard. I drive everywhere I go and I see Pinellas County Sheriff's deputies' cars parked behind churches, in parking lots, you know, back a little out of the way where they can sit and take a nap. And then I see these same de detectives' cars in all of their driveways at home. You know, if, if if you're a fireman, you don't get to take the fire truck at home at the end of the night right. so that we have to buy another fire truck for the night shift. Right. But that's what we're doing here in Pinellas County. Then we're paying for their tax, their, their gas to drive back and forth to work every day and providing them with a vehicle. Do we do that for teachers or any other government employee? Right. No. So there's so much waste going on in the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. And in my opinion, those funds are not being expended in a way where they could help and benefit the community, like properly investigating the rapes that they get reported. They have 15% arrest rate for rapes in Pinellas County. That's pathetic. Right. That's almost, to me, that, that's almost seeming like a go-ahead to rapists because, I mean, if you're just playing a numbers game, which, let's be honest, that's what criminals do. They play a numbers game. It's risk versus reward. So if the risk is I got a 15% chance getting caught, I mean, that, that's not a big risk. I mean, that's, that's almost saying, hey, you know, you've got a pretty good shot of being a serial rapist here, and we don't mind. Well, there's, there might also be another component to that. I personally know of a story where a Pinellas County Sheriff's deputy named Paul Martin had raped a woman. And the woman actually worked at the Hillsborough County State Attorney's Office, so this was not a maybe she's not telling the truth kind of a scenario. That was reported to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department and to Sheriff Galtieri, and they did not prosecute that case. There was never an arrest. They did nothing to that particular deputy. And that particular deputy also had been involved in a case where he solicited a 12-year-old girl for sex over text messages in exchange for a tent and some candy. And there was a multiple, you do this for me and I'll do this for, I'll bring you over the tent. You give me favors, I'll do favors for you. And the, that, that deputy actually showed up at that girl's house with a tent, a bag of gummy bears, and a flashlight. And I know for a fact that was reported to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. And the Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Galtieri, actually instructed Child Protective Investigations to not investigate the acts of the incident because it was a Pinellas County deputy. So you have things going on behind the scenes there where there might be not, not might not be investigating rapes because it might find out that one of their own members right. is the perpetrator. Right. And I've actually seen, uh, I want to say Lakeland, although don't quote me, uh, but a town here where they were running a, a sex sting operation and they actually caught, I believe it was like a lieutenant or a captain of not their unusual. own force. Yeah. So uh, we can see why that they want to try to keep this stuff on the down low. Um, what about the red flag laws? I haven't heard much about them in Florida or the confiscation of weapons in Florida like in Virginia, but I know in Nevada there's, I think, 24 out of the 27 sheriffs out there that have signed up to, to not confiscate weapons. Um, that's a big issue, I'm sure, among Second Amendment supporters here in Pinellas County as well. What, what do you feel on, on that? Or are you behind the no legislation to, to take Americans' weapons? Or how do you stand on that issue? Well, I, as I said before, the, the, you swear an oath to the Constitution. Unfortunately, the current sheriffs don't abide by that and adhere right. to it. Uh, I am a constitutionalist, which means it is in the Constitution. I will abide by it. I don't even have to swear an oath to that, but I definitely will. And if, if the, the Second Amendment very specifically says, will not be infringed. 
Right. That does, that's not open to debate. It's not up, open to uh, a, a passage of a law that violates that. It shall not be infringed. Well, and I feel very strongly about that. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because, you know, without the Second Amendment, without the ability to um, have some kind of protection against government, we've seen throughout history that that's, you know, pretty much the last straw in, in controlling basically whatever a citizen does uh, because there's no redress for him at that moment. I mean, peaceful re uh, redress can only get you so far, obviously, as you've seen throughout history. And sooner or later, the hammer's got to come down one way or another, be it the government or be it the citizens. It's, it's, uh, it's baked in the cake, I guess you could say. Well, I think as that, far uh, as society goes. Any government that feels that they have to disarm its citizens is not a good government. Right, right, absolutely, because, you know, the citizens are the government. The government is the citizens. It's we the people. It's just, you know, a lot of times people get this ideal that the government is some, you know, monster out there hiding in the woods and they can't really put their hand on it, but no one really says, hey, I'm the state. You're the state. We're the state. The government is just somebody we hire, like uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air hired his butler. You know, so the Fresh Prince is actually the government, but he's leaving his duties to this butler, and that's what we do. We hire these guys to represent us and uh, look out for our best interests. And well, that's know. why the sheriff's race is literally the most important vote any person will ever cast. And the reason why that vote is so critically important is because if you vote in the right sheriff, that sheriff will be there as your protector. He will keep the peace, which is what his mandate is, in your county. <clears throat> and he'll do that by following what the people who elected him wanted him to do. And a good sheriff, a proper sheriff, a sheriff for the people, won't have to be legislated to not take your guns. He won't have to be legislated to not put you in jail over a little bit of marijuana or paraphernalia. A good sheriff is going to fight for the people and not overcriminalize them, not prey upon them, not police for profit, not fill the jails with them because it's profitable for them. And if people understood that they don't have to vote for just the officer that the police industry tells you you have to vote for, and you vote for somebody outside that industry, then you have the ability to reform all of these things with one vote. You have ability to protect your rights for uh, cannabis legislation. You have the ability to protect your Second Amendment rights. You have the ability to protect every right that you want protected by literally electing a constitutional sheriff. All right. Another topic I want to get on to is, um, as people know that have seen, um, there's a lot of misinformed deputies out there about the law. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and this, I find, is part of where the divide comes from is because, you know, uh, for a long time, citizens also didn't know their rights. And so when deputies would come up and, and, you know, ask them for ID when they had no right to, the citizens would just hand them over. And now it seems to me that they feel entitled to do stuff like ask for your ID or search you or, like you said, pull you over in the car and search you in your console like on Live PD. Um, would you have any plans for maybe continuing uh, legal education for the deputies there? Or, or anything oh, absolutely. About I think that's one of the things that needs to be implemented immediately. You know, these deputies take a lot of this training, and I don't know what exactly the percentage is of it, but I would say 60, 70, maybe 80 percent, depending on the municipality, of that training is how to hurt and kill people. Okay. How about having some de-escalation training? How about having these deputies trained on their rights? <clears throat> when here in Pinellas, if, if an officer walks up to your car after he's pulled you over, you'll notice if you watch uh, live PD like we were talking about, those officers will do everything that they can do to get inside your car and search your car to try and criminalize you. Mm -hmm. And that was not the, the purpose for the stop. The purpose for the stop is if you made an illegal left turn, it was to issue the citation for the illegal left turn. Uh, they, they use the, uh, your, your tail light is out or your, break, or your license plate light is out to pull you over, and then the object of the game is for them to violate your constitutional rights and do an illegal search of your car and figure out some way to get in your car. And one of the ones they've always used is, I think I smell pot. That's a, a, an open door to get in your car. Or they'll use a drug dog that they can use to falsely alert on your car to get in your car. All you have to do is watch live PD and see how often they try and get inside people's cars, and that's got to stop. Right. And pulling people over for minor infractions to violate their constitutional rights should be done. We shouldn't be doing it here in Pinellas County, and that's part of the policing for profit, where the police industry is overexpanded. It's too prolific. There are too many officers everywhere. If you have three or four officers pulling over people for minor traffic infractions, do you have too many police? 
Right. And those police get supported by the money they take from the citizens. Right. And they do it, like you said, through the pretext stops of <clears throat> not using your blinker or something like that. And I've even heard stories of, you know, police going on high-speed chases, putting on people's lives in danger because somebody didn't use their blinker or whatever, you know, they end up catching up to them or, or what have you not. But um, it, it just seems, uh, I don't know, difficult you know, that these guys would, in the sense, create many traffic infractions, pulling new turns in the middle of traffic, running through yellow or red lights, trying to catch this guy who just didn't use his blinker, you know, and you want to give him a $136 ticket or you want to look into his vehicle and, and see what, you know, you might be able to find. And in the case of the, the gentleman up in North Florida, plant what you can find, you know. and That's not uncommon. Yeah, uh, so. I would say that uh, across the board in the police industry, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of all police reports that are filed have some level of intentional dis misrepresentation, deceit, or omission that tilts the police report against the citizen in order to wrongfully convict them. And then I know for a fact, I have documented cases here in Pinellas County of Pinellas County Sheriff deputies <clears throat> knowingly and intentionally, literally lying about something that did not even occur. I told you a story earlier yes. about where they testified about something they specifically saw, and I have video that proves there's no way they could have saw it because it didn't even exist in the video. Right. And so when you have deputies, they call it test a lie. And if I'm sheriff in Pinellas County, several things are going to happen. One of them is <clears throat> any deputy that is caught lying will be terminated immediately. Uh, there's not going to be any guess, second guessing about that. If a deputy lies, he's gone. And I yeah. want every lying deputy that's in Pinellas County to hit the road. Right. I will also make sure they don't get jobs anyplace else if they've ever lied. And that's something that's never happened. Police industry has an has a ingrained philosophy that we will lie, cheat, do whatever we need to do to convict these people. And that's wrong. If someone did something wrong and the, the evidence proves that they did something wrong, then they deserve the, the punishment Absolutely. that they're supposed to get. Absolutely. <clears throat> but you don't bend the laws, create the evidence, fabricate testimony to try and put people in jail because you needed that arrest to meet Sheriff Galtieri's quotas. So there's going to be a, an accountability in Pinellas County, a, a reform of holding officers accountable here in Pinellas County that has never been seen in any police inst station, any police jurisdiction in the entire country. That's nice. That's nice. And, and, and that's what we were hoping for when we got on your page, you know. Um, again, a lot of my uh, viewers know that I don't vote because in a lot of instances I don't believe it's who votes but who counts the votes that really matter. So uh, I'm going to be watching this election very closely, and uh, and I want to, to see good results because we need them. Uh, the people need people like you and and, and people out there, you know, um, showcasing their rights and, and, and letting these people know that it's us that actually own the country, that run the country. Uh, the guys that we elect and the guys that we put in there, they're just in our steed because we have businesses to run or we have families to raise up. and. We don't have time, you know, to do that governance, and you know, as them, it's their their full time job. But um, but that's that's why I'm running, so that people like you don't have to. Right and here, Pinellas County has an unusual opportunity that's not being offered anywhere else in any other jurisdiction. You have the right to vote for a sheriff who will solve a lot of the problems that the public is upset about with the police industry with one vote one guy that can literally go in there and do all of it. But I can't do it on my own. Uh, I need the public to support me. I need them to donate. I need them to help get the message out because when I have a message like the one I'm giving out, the media blackballs me. The Absolutely. The Tampa Bay Times will not give you an article. Uh, when I ran 2016, the Tampa Bay Times refused to tell the people of Pinellas County that I was offering to end marijuana enforcement because they thought that I might actually win if every voter in Pinellas County knew I was offering that when medical marijuana was a huge vote. So they literally were silent on that. And they're going to be silent about this election. They don't say anything about me unless it's a, a detriment. So I have to be able to get my message to the people without the media. And I need help to do that. So if anybody, not only in Pinellas County, but in the rest of the country, would like to see how this is going to work and maybe get someone in their community to run as a constitutional sheriff that works for the people, then it starts here with me. Help me get elected. Donate to my cause get me in that seat, and then let me show the country how a constitutional sheriff that works for the people can, can benefit a community. Absolutely. I, I love the ideal. I love the uh, uh, 
the stamina, I guess, the excitement that you have for it. And, and, and like you said, it's not a lot. You know, usually we see one guy that's uh, been sure, or, you know, been in a, the department 40 years and another guy who's been in a the department in New York for 40 years, you know, and that's, that's <laughs> pretty much, picks, yeah, you know? <laughs> there, there's pretty much who you get to pick from. And, you, you get you know, Stalin or you get Hitler? Which one do you want? Right. And, 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 you know, it's, it, it it boggles my mind because anybody, like you said, anybody can run for sheriff. I mean, you can have, if you've got 15,000 members in your county, you can have 15,000 people campaigning for sheriff. Well, that's true here in Florida, but there are some states that specifically prohibited uh, anyone who is not a law enforcement officer from running sheriff. There are very minority, yeah. there are very many of them, but I guarantee you that if I win this election, there's going to be police officers marching on Tallahassee to try and change that law so that you cannot have this option, this offer, this opportunity. Right, right. And uh, and, and I didn't know that about, uh, you know, you having to be law enforcement to get the sheriff's positions in some states. But hopefully after they see your election, they see your campaign, they see what you can do, uh, hopefully the citizens of those states will take it take it back to the ballot in their state and, and get some. Because like you said, any kind of elected official is just a, an executive official. It's, it's, it's an administrative position. Um, you know, I don't know if any of my viewers realize this, but, but back in the 1800s, there were Supreme Court justices that were put on the bench that were never lawyers, you know, uh, and yet here they are on the Supreme Court, which is the highest bench and, and lawmaking bench in, in the, the country. Uh, well, somebody uh, was t asking me about that the other day. Uh, how can you run uh, as a... Uh, a sheriff if you've ever been a law enforcement officer <clears throat> and that's easy it doesn't take much to go into an agency the agency already runs itself even if sheriff galtieri is gone which he is gone most of the time if you look at his schedule right. it runs itself and my job isn't to go in there and upend everything fire everybody my job is to go in there look around see what's working see what's being done right and leave that alone and then see what's not working and what's not being done right change it or eliminate it and you have a, a situation like a, a Nelson Mandela as an example. Yeah. Uh, he was in jail for 25 years, one of the nation's biggest criminals, and he became the president of that nation. <clears throat> and he did a great job. So it's not a matter of who you are. It's not a matter of what you, it's a matter of what you can bring to the table, what ideas you're bringing, what reforms you're bringing. And do the people of Pinellas County want those reforms or they just want the same old status quo of the police, expanding police state, citizen surveillance and policing for profit that they've had all this time. It's, right. time, to, it's time to change it. It is time to change that. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is uh, one of my subscribers, he's a, he owns a couple of radio stations uh, out of state, and, uh, and he lives in South Carolina, and there's a sheriff's race going on in his county as well, and uh, he's met with all the candidates up there, and uh, one of the things that he was bringing to the table up there, which I'd like to talk to you about now, is... Uh, like a citizen oversight board, not an oversight, but a, like a citizen advisory board that can maybe work in some kind of tandem uh, with the sheriff's office uh, for complaints and, and other stuff like that. Maybe, uh, you know, ideals also from the citizen side of it. Would you be open to something like that in the Pinellas County Sheriff once you get elected? Or Well, I've actually done a lot of research on those citizen boards uh, that are around the country and most of them are already corrupted because they require they require three people from the police industry three people from the legal community which is technically part of the same <laughs> correct scam, and then three people from the community so that the three people from the community can never outvote the three lawyers and the three cops that are all part of the system there's usually a way where if there's a a, a community board of some type, there is a way to control that board by the government. So it doesn't really work. Uh, I think that if people see me in office, number one, they're going to realize that they're not going to have anybody that's going to be more strict and hold these deputies more accountable than I am. But I would love to have citizens come sit on a board and tell me if I'm doing a good job. Another thing I intend on doing here in Pinellas County, which will be the first uh, around the country, and I hope that to expand that and create it so it can just be picked up and used everywhere else, is I want to start something kind of like Angie's List. You know, where people have, they list their businesses. I want to do that for Andy, Andy Taylor from Bayberry RFD, Andy's List, where we're going to have every single Pinellas County deputy online. And I want the community to review them. 
Ran, ran into Deputy Smith the other day. He was very polite and he was nice. Ran into Deputy Johnson. What an idiot. Yeah. That guy violated my rights, was demeaning and rude to me. Where you can actually go out and look at these deputies and, and, and give them a review and tell me what happened. If you can actually file a complaint through that, which I'll have that monitored. And when it comes time to do their reviews, whether or not they're going to get a raise or a promotion, one of the things that I'm going to do is look to those reviews to see how well they did. Just like I would not recommend them if it was a bad restaurant, I'm not going to to recommend them for a, a promotion or a raise if they're a bad deputy. Right. Well, that, that's, again, another landmark uh, decision, I guess, on your part, because, uh, again, that's not out there, you know. We're in a nature like, reserve. <laughs> yeah, se se seems like the wildlife love that, uh, love that ideal as well. <laughs> I think it sounded like you thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, that would be... That would be great because, as we know, most complaints, again, you know, you being the, the head of the agency wouldn't even see those complaints. It would go to somebody in IA and they might, you know, go ahead and, you know, file 13 and around the side. So it's good that you would have access to a database uh, to where you could see reviews left by citizens um, and, and, and able to, to see that without any other hands because usually we're the stuff gets mixed up is there's so many hands that the information has got to go through. Um, it's not a mix-up. The, the, the complaint <laughs> system at the Pinellas County Sheriff is specifically designed to intimidate people not to make complaints and Absolutely. once you do make complaints to bury the complaint and if it's impossible to bury to have them be the minimum amount of enforcement. We had Deputy Timothy Verdon who lied about a, a poor guy trying to take his gun, which he never did. Deputy Verdon didn't like what he said, so he pulled out his gun, shot the handcuffed man twice in the back of his seat. Sheriff Galtier, he said he was a hero for doing what he was trained to do. Well, it turned out the guy never took the guy's gun. Deputy Verdon lied about the whole thing. It went through the Pinellas County process, and Deputy Verdon got two years of probation without adjudication, which means it's not even on his criminal record. Right. And that's what happens in Pinellas County. If you can pull out your gun, there's a Pinellas County Sheriff driving by right now. If you pull out your gun and shoot a handcuffed guy in the back of your car, lie about it, and you only get two years probation without an adjudication, something's seriously wrong here in Pinellas County. And what's seriously wrong here in Pinellas County is Sheriff Robert Galtieri. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in that. I've had numerous interactions out here in Pinellas County now, and uh, one of the things I could definitely say is that the uh, deputies out here need some more training on citizens' rights and uh, basically just how to interact with the public because, uh, you know, I, the way I feel is if, uh, you know, again, if you're a criminal and you've done some crime, absolutely do the time. Uh, but for normal citizens that people know me to be out there with a camera uh, doing something perfectly legal, um, and just the way I'm approached sometimes, you know, again by the deputies, but also sort of, by, you know, by the public workers, uh, is just uh, repulsive to me. You know, some people, they don't even believe it. They say, wow, you know, I can't believe that happened, or, you know, I can't believe their attitude. Um, you know, the police, just like any other public agency, uh, they don't have customers. Their customers are forced to be the customers due to the fact where they live. So if they have a problem with the Sheriff Gutierrez, it's not like they can call the Sheriff of Hillsborough County to come on over and investigate and, you know, help out or, or to do anything like that. So well, you, you raise a good point because that's another thing I'm going to be implementing here in Pinellas County is my political corruption unit. Because right now there are code enforcement officers, mayors, city council members, judges who are highly corrupt in Pinellas County. And there is no place you can go to report these people. No. Good luck trying. Find a corrupt official and then find someone to try and report that to. There's nobody. So here in Pinellas County, I'm opening up the political corruption unit where the Pinellas County Sheriff will take a report. I don't care if it's a Pinellas County uh, deputy or a Clearwater police officer, St. Pete police officer, a code enforcement officer up in Dunedin, whatever the case might be. If they report the crime to me, we will investigate. And as one of the things I'm going to be doing that I... I I get mixed reviews from, but uh, I don't like the fact that Mayor Chrisman of St. Pete has been dumping raw sewage into Tampa Bay. And within the first 30 days of my office, I'm going to march into Mayor Chrisman's office and I'm going to put handcuffs on him for polluting the waterways of Pinellas County. It's a violation. It's a crime. It's a, it's, a, it's a criminal act for him to authorize and allow that to happen, but nobody does anything about it. Right. And I am going to arrest Mayor Chrisman the first time, just after I'm in for 30 days, and if so much as a bucket of human waste and excrement is dumped into the bay, I will be back to arrest him again. I'll pick him up at his home, I'll pick him up at his restaurant, if he's out eating, at his mayor's office. Every single time he dumps sewage, he's going to be arrested. 
And that's the only way that we're going to get our corrupt officials to understand that the people have had enough because the people elected a sheriff who's going to stop it. Well, I, I like everything that I've heard. Um, and like I said, we've had a long talk before. Uh, so I know what you've been through that got you to this point. And, uh, you know, again, most people, uh, not viewers of my channel, because uh, a lot of them are already uh, woken up to the corruption that happens. And again, they're from all over the world, so they see it not only here in America, but I, I've got good fans over in Sweden and, and the UK and some other spots. And it's it's something that's it's worldwide. And, uh, you know, we like to think that we're free here in America, but a lot of times it's we're only free to do what they tell us. And uh, when they tell us to do something and they have their corrupt buddies to back it up and even make laws about it, there's really no redress for the citizens. So... Uh, what you're saying to me about the local county sheriff, which is a constitutionally elected position, and the power that they have to enforce or not enforce laws uh, that go against the Constitution, uh, that rings true to me, and it rings something that's been needed for a long time. Well, it rings true to a lot of people, but before they were offered a sheriff like me, what are their options? There exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's just like the, it's just the same thing. When you have those corrupt people in power, you know, like the story you were telling me, these 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 deputies are coming to you and harassing you, and you're like, I'll take it to the man. And <laughs> you take it to the man, and well, it's this, it's this corrupt card buddy, you know. And all of a sudden, you're absolutely left with nothing uh, except to scramble like you did and get that information, and and which a lot of people don't don't know how to do. Uh, a lot of people maybe don't have the time to do. I mean, I've heard, and I'm sure you have, all kinds of horror stories, um, be it from people getting their kids taken, uh, uh, you know, people going to jail for or unpaid fines that, you know, were actually slapped upon them by, again, somebody's uh, ex-wife, ex-girlfriend that's now dating a, a cop or something like that in nature. Well, I, um, had to, I had to actually fire my attorneys and represent myself because my attorneys would not do what needed to be done. And they, and they told you that. They told you, yes. said, hey, this guy is corrupt, and I can't do nothing about it. So and you, they, they you decided said, said to it, take it into your own hands. And, and after representing myself in the system and learning how to do that, which is complicated, I, I don't recommend it for everybody. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. You have to be very organized, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to do. <clears throat> but if you have the stamina, the ability, and, and the, the tenacity to do that, I highly recommend you representing yourself because no one's going to know your case better than you do. <clears throat> but here in Pinellas County, we stop that corruption at the sheriff. We stop that corruption at the deputy with the handcuffs on his belt. That's where the mass incarceration stops. That's where the abuses stops at that deputy level because once the handcuffs are on and you're in the system, it's too late. That's right. So people need to understand that to reform mass incarceration, to reform the police industry, it starts by electing the right sheriff. And up until now, you haven't been offered the candidacy of the right sheriff. No, yeah. No, no one that I can remember, uh, again, in, in all my years here in Florida, has uh, presented any such case other than the status quo, you know. Uh, and you can see it every election. Oh, I'll, I'll raise incarceration rates 20% and, you know, we'll have more deputies on the street. And, you know, everything to uh, a lot of these guys is uh, more money, more deputies, and... Um, and like you said, national crime rate's been going down. And the same thing with, with uh, you know, gun violence and stuff. A lot of people say, oh, you know, more guns on the street means more crime and stuff. But as we could see over the last 20, 30 years, states have been passing carry laws and more states have been allowed to carry. And now more people own a lot more guns. But crime from now, from 30 years ago, has gone down. So it's... I know it kind of baffles those people that, that want to say guns, are, you know what I mean? And they don't really know how to, you know, admit it, so they kind of ignore it, but... Well, they're falling uh, for the police industry propaganda, which is crime is so terrible, there's a war on cops, all these things are really terrible, and you need us yeah. to protect you from that. And not only that you need us, we need to be bigger, we need to be larger, we need to have more of your money. That's right. And it's just an ongoing perpetual scam of the people of Pinellas County, yeah. and that's got to stop. If, if I stop enforcing medical marijuana. Gov Sheriff Galtieri says that about 38% of his resources are spent on marijuana enforcement, which is insane. Yeah. If I take that money, which is clearly easily over $50 million a year, that money can be better spent in offering uh, treatment options to the people that are addicted, not arresting people over personal use, giving them help instead, helping the, the homeless community, giving job training to people that are incarcerated so that when they get out, they actually have the ability to, pr to provide for themselves rather than commit additional crimes. So there's all kinds of different ways where that kind of money can be better spent uh, helping the community 
rather than putting handcuffs on them because I don't know any addicted person that was ever cured by handcuffs. Right, right. And, and you know, it's funny you brought up the, uh, you know, helping people out because in jail, once you get out of prison, I believe it's a 70, 75% recidivism rate where they go right back to committing crime. And, and like I mentioned to you earlier, you know, when you get thrown in there and there's no kind of... Uh, way to better yourself and you know you're not going to come out as an armed robbery suspect from you know 10 years in jail and come out and and be a a, you know help to society you're going to go and you're going to work at mcdonald's because no one else will hire you you're going to get upset because you're only making 50 dollars a week and uh, you know that doesn't pay for a lady or you know anything of any nature that uh, humans want or need or desire and you're going to go right back to crime you know and it keeps the crime rate high so that way the sheriff can say, we need more people, you know, there, there's still crime out on the street. Um, well, if we, if we train these people, we can actually hire these people. What I found disgusting was that in many municipalities like Pinellas County, the Pinellas County government is the largest employer. But how many of those people do they hire? None. Because they're hiring their friends, their nepotism, their brothers, their, bro- their sister-in-law, and they've they've kept all of this money that's in the county for themselves, for their own retirements, for their own benefits, to the exclusion of the community that needs it the most. So I see training people within the jail systems, and I have no problem with literally training some of these people in the jail and then hiring them at the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department when they get out, yeah. to, to show them that there is an opportunity, that it's all, it is not all bleak, and if you just go down a certain path and, uh, and take advantage of the assistance that we offer you, we can show you a different way, instead of letting you just go back in your community with no skills. Right. Right, and that's that's what happens today. I know because I've known many of friends that have been through that system, and uh, and uh, you know they come out and, and they, they do make some of them do make better uh, sense of themselves. But a lot of times it's it's hard, it's depressing for them, you know, and a lot of them don't see any other way. So you know that's why the recidivism rate is so high. But you know some of the the stuff that that goes on and there's basically just people hanging out on the street corner playing basketball and there's nothing it, for them to do right there's really no college classes there's really no you know the library they'll push around is just a little cart with some uh, daniel Steele novels on it, it, you it, know it's trades it's so, tr- trades is the answer because uh, people can work with their hands and make actually a decent living uh, you can teach people a trade like welding or, or plumbing uh, or a- ac hvac or uh, uh, construction or plumbing, like you say, or electrical work. You can teach somebody something like that and get them to a pretty good skill level in a relatively short period of time. And if we have people that are at the jail training these people and they're ready, uh, I would like to have a job program where we get people from the community, I need someone to do this. And whoever has been doing what they need to do, learning what they needed to do, been a model citizen in the jail through their time, hey, we've got a guy here. Would you consider hiring him? And I think that we can help the community by taking those people out of that rat race they're in and bringing them back into productive, productive citizens rather than just punishing them for no reason. There is no such thing as corrections. Correction, I think that's the wrong word for it because they don't correct anything. Matt, it's incarceration. <laughs> the Pinellas County punishment machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that, that, that's what they do. They punish the citizens when they get out of line. And, you know, and, and I want to make one other point. The people, the community, usually says, oh, lock them all up, put them all in jail. But the community has to realize that you are the ones paying to lock them up in jail. You are paying, I think it's it's 40000 some odd, $42,000 a year for every single person that you want the Pedales County Sheriff's Department to lock up. $42,000 each. And that's a lot of money. I'd rather put them on the payroll, pay them the $42,000, and have them do work for the county. It's, right. a, it's a much better option. Right, than having them sit there on their backside 98% of the time, unless they're getting up to eat or shower. <laughs> the Pinellas County Punishment Machine spends about $500 million a year here in Pinellas. And, and like I said before, that's literally $500 out of your pocket for every man, woman, and child to punish these people. And I think we can reduce that substantially and not have any detriment to the community to do it. In fact, have a benefit to the community. Right. No, and I agree with you. What you said, the 20% number on the $500 million you'd like to cut out um, the first year. And, and I see that as very doable. Absolutely. Uh, selling the sheriff's airplane. I mean, I, I don't know why the guy needs an airplane. Well, no, it's Donald I'm, Trump. I'm going to shut down his <laughs> citizen spying machine. He's got a... Sheriff Galtieri here in Pinellas County has one of the most expansive citizen spying machines that exists in the world. He has the largest facial recognition program of anybody other than the FBI. He has 30 million faces in his Pinellas County 
facial recognition program when there's less than a million people that even live in Pinellas County. There's no reason for this. You go down the street, every single poll has cameras. That's part of that camera system, that, that facial recognition system. He had cameras at the airport scanning everybody that came and went to Pinellas County. He's got license plate readers parked all over the city that follow and track your car everywhere it goes. And one of the first things I'm going to do as sheriff is I'm shutting down his citizen surveillance machine because it's a violation of the Constitution. Absolutely it is. I'm glad you brought that up because it just recently this year came to my attention about about all the uh, the plate readers and uh, you know I was out in Tampa one day and uh, me and a buddy we was out doing some modding and uh, we were walking down the side of the road and sure enough here comes this parking truck and it's got tag readers all over it and it just roll by a car roll by a car stop boot roll by a car roll by a car stop boot you know and it's like they're 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 like you say criminalizing people in order to to keep the money flowing and, and you know it it's common sense. You need money every year to operate, you know, and if, if you're stopping crime, if crime rate's going down, if people are safer, well, then there's no need to give the sheriff more money than he had the year before. One of the things I like about you guys' video, the, the auditors that go to these government agencies, one of the things I look for, having been a former employer and had employees working for me all my life, I, I go in and I watch what you're doing, and you go up to these windows, and so many of those government employees don't look like they're doing a damn thing. Not, not much. <laughs> Sitting around, chit-chatting, having parties in the back room. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how often they go there and they catch them doing nothing. Absolutely. And maybe nothing. that's why they don't want the cameras there. But I'm sorry, we have a bloated government that is sucking the life out of the people of Pinellas County. And that has to end and that has to stop. And I'm going to start that process at the sheriff's office. Well, I like it. I like everything you said. I've got my full support. Um, you want to tell everybody when the election is? Uh, the election is in November of 2020. Uh, I'm going to have a, uh, I don't have my website up yet, but it's going to be up here in the next couple of weeks. You can go to the uh, 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 James McLennis for Pinellas County Sheriff Facebook page. Please donate. Please support. Uh, I'm going to need donations from around the entire world to pull this off. I can't just rely on the citizens of Pinellas County. But if you believe in free people, if you believe in freedom, vote McLennis to free Pinellas. Absolutely. And, and I'll have links to all that stuff. Uh, underneath the video. I'm going to put uh, snippets of this video on my Rogue Nation and on the Bang News Channel uh, and uh, my Facebook page, of course, and, and, and we're going to try to get some support rounded up out there because there's a lot of citizens that watch my channel, Wright's channel, and uh, a lot of our other buddies' channels, and, and they want to see change. You know, that's why they're, they're backing me. That's why they're watching me because a lot of times I'm not out there just cursing because I can curse at, a, at, at you know at another man uh, but I'm actually out there and uh, I go back to visit to make sure that they made the changes that are necessary for the like you say the Constitution and the law uh, and that, that that's a big part of the reason why I'm out there uh, you know for a long time I've had questions of government and I just get stonewalled like you said and uh, you know I don't want to tell people it's 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 a wall out there because you know some people yeah you know, want hope and some people can't believe the stories that we know to be true. Uh, but I, I do want to tell them that it's what, you know, when it hits you, it'll hit you hard and then you'll believe you'll be a believer for sure. And, uh, hopefully we can interject before that happens to a lot of citizens and, uh, and they won't ever have to know that, you know, but, uh, for the ones that already do like you, <laughs> and 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 the, and the millions of others I'm sure we know are out there. They are. Uh, then then they know already that this has to stop. It has to end because it's otherwise it's it's going to flip flop us. We're not going to be anywhere we wanted to be. Well, as an auditor, I'm sure you watch other auditors, and I, yeah. I actually watch the auditor pages because I like to see how the police are interacting around the country. And the same thing is happening everywhere. It's not just Pinellas County. It's not just who you happen to catch that particular day. It is a systematic police industry problem across the board. And unfortunately, uh, the police industry acts as an industry, as a whole huge united industry. And then when something goes wrong, they claim it's just that department. And so it's not us, it's them. It's not, we didn't do that, they did. And the problem is, it's a police industry-wide problem. And if you look across the board, it's something that happens everywhere. And my candidacy for sheriff is literally the only one like it in the entire country. You will not see anything like this anywhere else. So, again, I think the people of Pinellas County are being offered a huge opportunity. It's just going to be interesting to see whether they take it or not. It will be interesting. All right, James. Nice, nice to meet you. Out here. Nice you. to meet you, sir. All right. Shut this off. And